We are interested in human evolution, especially in the evolution of the human brain. Among the many possible approaches to this question, we are interested in the genetic side of it. Since humans and chimpanzees split some 6 million years ago, roughly 20 million genetic changes happened during human evolution. How can we find out which of those contribute to the special properties of the human brain? For the first time, one tries to model aspects of human brain evolution in a mouse. We investigate the human-specific properties of a gene called FOXP2. And FOXP2 is interesting for two reasons. The first reason is that it's the only single gene known so far that is rather specifically involved in human speech and language development. That's because humans that have only one functional copy of this transcription factor show specific impairments how they learn speech and also how they learn language. And it seems that certain neural circuits that are normally necessary to develop proper speech and language do not develop properly in these patients. The second reason is that FOXP2 changed especially during human evolution. In the over 100 million years that separate rodents from primates, only one change took place, and this change is a rather conservative one. In contrast, in the only 6 million years of human evolution, two changes took place. And this suggests that maybe one or two of those changes were advantageous during the evolution of human speech or language. Such hypotheses about human evolution are really exciting, but we also really need ways to further explore them. So we generated mice in which the normal endogenous FOXP2 gene carries these two human-specific amino acid changes. We then compared mice that carried this humanized FOXP2 gene with their normal litter mates. In addition, we and others also analyzed mice that have only one functional copy of FOXP2, which might model aspects of speech impairment seen in humans. All these mice are very healthy, and humanizing FOXP2 has, for example, no effect on lung function or heart function or metabolism. However, it does affect the brain. And importantly, the effects we see in the brain are partly in opposite direction to the effects we see for the mice that have only one functional copy of FOXP2, suggesting that in the mice models, speech deficit and speech evolution go into opposite directions. For example, we investigated synaptic plasticity in neurons of the striatum. We find that in humanized mice, long-term depression is increased in those neurons. In contrast, mice that have only one functional copy of FOXP2 show a reduced long-term depression, suggesting that those two opposite tendencies might tweak neural circuits in the striatum that are important for speech and language development. We also find that humanized mice have ultrasonic vocalization at a slightly lower pitch. We do not know how that relates to our other neurological findings because too little is known about ultrasonic vocalizations. We also do not know how these innate vocalizations relate to human speech, but we nevertheless find it rather remarkable that humanizing FOXP2 has an effect on mouse vocalizations. We will never be able to fully reconstruct our genetic history, but mice models might help to assemble a few relevant pieces.